Hi there, Olivia here. This is a three-part tutorial, all to do with what I call the hanging cobra. So it's a back bend to which we add a tractioning effect through the shoulders. It's a whole spine bend, and we'll also add some shoulder blade and shoulder repositioning movements, which can give you some interesting sensations. Um, and because it's a traction hanging uh, position, you'll get a lat effect as well. Whilst it's a back bend, of course the back bends always stretch tissues on the front of the body, and I find you can get all sorts of fantastic effects around here, crossways and also vertically, and you can get into the abdomen, and you can get into the muscles at the front of the hip joint. So it's, it's a really multi-purpose exercise, it feels fantastic. So the part one is done using ladder bars. You could use the edge of a table as well, make sure it's firm. The beauty of the ladder bars, however, is that you've got multiple rungs so you can choose the height that works for you. So, let's get going. To get into it, I find the easiest way is to hold onto the rungs with the hands just a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, and elbows are bent as you, in a controlled way, lower yourself through, and you wouldn't have to start with the hips as close to the ladder bars as I did, you can play around with that. Now I've chosen a rung which allows me to have the front of my hips on the floor. Um, and so I'm completely supported, I can control how much hanging is happening there. And I just initially stay there and breathe and relax and get used to the sensation. If you felt like you needed to adjust the width of your hands narrower or wider, then you could do that now. Make sure you've got a good grasp of the ladder bars with the hands. And then Focus on hanging so that your shoulders start to lift up towards your ears and you're breathing into the top of the chest, you're breathing into the ribs, you're breathing into the abdomen. So all the way through the front of the body you're breathing comfortably. I've got my head in a little bit of extension just because I happen to have a rung right next to my mouth but by all means you could have the head in a more forward facing the wall position if that's more comfortable for you. Breathe and relax here. We can do a few things. Have a play with a little attempt to pull up, feel what that feels like, feel what's activated in the lats, and then let yourself hang out again. Just try that a few times. Pull up, like the first part of a chin up, and then hang. Good. Then have a play with taking the head back a little bit more and I'm actively trying to press my chest in towards the ladder bars. Good. All the while breathing. As I do that movement of pushing the chest forward, now I'm starting to get the stretch right down through the abdomen, through the abdominals. And I'm also pressing out a little bit through my toes, and that gives a lengthening effect through the front of the legs. And that's starting to get into the front of the hips as well, hip flexors. Add a very small side-to-side -side movement of your hips. Tiny rotation of the pelvis, tiny lateral shift of the hips. And the combination allows you to get into each front hip area in turn. And it also winds on the stretch through the abdominals on that same side. Breathing. Now at this point I'm completely hanging out of the shoulders. There's no feeling of being pulled up away from the floor. I'm hanging. I'm hanging in towards the ladder bars. And then I'm going to play with drawing the shoulder blades together, pulling the shoulders back, and then let, let them hang forward again. So what we're doing here is adding small repositioning of various parts of the body and little activations and then once you let go of the activation, or the slight contraction, then you feel things let go and you can stretch more. And then to come out, push away a little bit, bring a hand down and help yourself up. And after any back bend, we want to do a counter flexion, a round out. I like this one. It allows me to pull a little bit with the arms, Press back with the middle back, add some side to side movements around the shoulders and around the hips so you can ease out any residual tension through the back of the body there. 
So that is part one of this tutorial, the hanging cobra dutton on the ladder bars. Part two of this tutorial shows a version of the hanging cobra dun on the rings. Many of you have got access to rings. You'll see that the rings are set quite high. Unlike the version we just did on the ladder bars where the pelvis is resting on the floor, here you've got a lot more freedom of movement because the whole of the body is in free space. You're hanging between your hands on the rings and your feet on the floor. Um, I find that this version tends to de-emphasize the movement in the lower back and it really is a, a whole lengthening through the front of the body and right down through the lats and up through the arms as well. It does require a little bit, bit of grip strength because you're hanging off the rings. So let's do it. Nice firm grip on the rings. I've got my thumb around as well and I'm going to step the feet back. I like to do it for some reason I can't explain with my legs wide apart on the floor and I'm focusing initially on just the hanging aspect. Have a bit of a play testing your strength to be able to pull yourself up and down out of position as required. That also activates a few things and then allows you to relax every time you let yourself hang down a little bit more. By all means you could have the feet a little bit closer underneath you if you find that allows you to de-emphasize some of the, the strength required through the grip on the rings there. But I like to have my feet further back so I've got more load and I've got that whole lengthening effect through the front of the body. Good. Breathe deeply into the chest, into the ribs at the front and the sides and right down through the lower abdomen. Well, everything on the front of the body is getting stretched there. Then have a play with turning the rings around, of course they're free to move in space as well, so you can change the internal external rotation in the shoulder joints. You can move the rings a little bit further apart, let them settle narrower when you're fully hanging there. You can incorporate some neck extension, little wriggling movements. Then you can play with pulling the shoulders back and then letting them go forward pulling the shoulders back and really exaggerate, pushing the chest forward, forward where your nose is pointing, and then hang. Then I'm going to do a slight twist here, and that really pulls down through the abdomen and front of the hip on that side that I twisted towards. On this side, it's way more of a lat stretch as I do that twisting movement. So because you've got almost infinite planes of movement to explore here. See what happens when you go one way versus the other. Here I'm now going to draw the shoulder back and the ring is moving back a little bit as well. All sorts of interesting sensations into the pecs, all the tissues across the rib cage there. At any point you could do a contraction here. I could try to do a bit of a pull up with the left arm that I twisted towards. You could also do a bit of a crunching movement. So I'm pushing the ring forward, the left one, and I'm trying to drag my left foot along the floor. Anything that attempts to shorten the part of the body that's getting lengthened, that's the contraction you want to play with. And then come back to the middle position and hang, hang, hang. And now I'm going to move the hips a little bit back, physically back and up away from the floor as I press out through the heels and that's what pulls on more of a, a back bend. Good. All right, to come out, walk the feet through and do a little round out in the opposite direction. Still hanging on to the rings, adding some rotations, chin to chest, and up you come. Wow, that's magic. Okay, now we're here for part three of this tutorial. We've moved upstairs so that I can show you a single arm version of the hanging cobra using our banisters. Consider the banisters as ladder bars but turned around 90 degrees and you'll see why that's useful in a moment because I will need to be able to get my head to go between the uprights here. Um, let's do it. I'm going to start with the right side. I've got a palm on top of the banister grip here and that's quite different to holding onto the rungs of the ladder bars downstairs. What happens is you get a really nice sensation through the forearm and into the arm with this grip I find. 
The other hand I'll put down on the floor here so I can control getting into my initial position. And the beauty of this setup is that because of the height of the banister in relation to my proportions, my pelvis and quite a bit of the front of the hips is completely supported on the floor. So there's a less of a hanging effect here, which is good because I'm only going to have one arm at a time. Now the other arm, my left arm in this case, I'm going to put it on the ground. I'm going to hold on to that same rail because that arm can provide a pulling force. I'm thinking about pulling my ribs around here. I'm using a gentle pulling force to pull the ribs and the chest towards the banister. And then I settle there, I rest. I can do some tiny side to side movements of my chest, shoulders, ribs. And I find that if I move just a little bit to the right, then I get the strongest effect through the arm, through the chest, through the ribs on that side. Then what I'm going to do is exaggerate pressing the right hip front of leg onto the floor. Then I'm going to tuck the toes of the right foot underneath and I'm doing two things. I'm pressing out through the heel, but I'm also doing a toe pressing action because that drives my hip further into the floor and actually drives the whole right side of my abdomen, rib cage, chest, front of arm closer to the rails. That's a very powerful stretch through the front of the hip even a little bit into the top of the quadricep on that right side and through the abdomen on the right and the ribs. Breathe deeply into the front of the body. We'll do a contraction here. I'm going to pull down through the right arm. I'm going to push the right arm forward. Imagining I'm doing an abdominal curling attempt and I'm pressing the right foot into the floor. So again, I'm trying to shorten everything through that extended front part of the right of the body. And then I let all of that effort go. I hang a little bit more, pull a bit more with the left arm, drive the right hip into the floor, press out through the right heel, press forward through the front of the toes on the right side, breathe. And then if I want to make it a bit more intense, and who wouldn't, now I'm going to try and just unweight the right hip, just a fraction, just a fraction, and then settle again. Good. All right, I'm going to pull up a bit so that I can change sides if you need to come out in order to switch sides and do it that way. Now, on my left side, I'm instantly aware that it's a much more powerful arm stretch and very strong up here, whereas on the right side it was a lot lower down. So I'm instantly aware of that difference one side to the other. So I'm going to do a few little, you can't really see this, but the left hand that's on the banister, I'm doing little movements like this, just little movements. That's all you can actually do here. And that gives me some very cool sensations up through this part of the arm here. And then just like we did on the first side, I do some side to side and I work out where I need my chest positioned in relation to the hand up on the top of the banister there. And then I push the left hip into the floor. I'm pulling with that lower arm. I'm also resting some of my weight on that arm. And now that the arm muscles have relaxed a little bit, now the stretch is moving down through here and lower. So drive the left hip into the floor, tuck the toes of the left foot under. I'm pressing out through the left heel, but I'm also pushing down through the toes and that moves me or drives me forward. Quite a lot of forces happening here. Let's do the contraction. So Imagine you're trying to do the first part of a one arm chin up and then I'm pushing the left arm forward. I'm trying to do an abdominal curl and I'm pushing the left foot down into the floor. Three, two, one. Big breath. Hang. I'm also adding more of an exaggerated rotation around the ribs and more through the hips. Breathe. Breathe deeply into the front of the body. 
We haven't yet talked about the head and neck position. Of course, you could extend through there. You can add some rotations of the head on the neck. Good. Completely different emphasis in my body in terms of where I feel the stretch one side to the other. It's a remarkable difference. Okay, to come out, pull up and push up. And you'll want to complete the sequence with a round out. So there you have it, three different versions of the hanging cobra. Give them all a go and let us know how it feels in your body.